Hi, this is Dr. Nurse, November 28, 2010. I'm going to send these out to you early today. I'm going over the rea Reaction 8, I believe it's Reaction 8, the addition of HBr, and it is only HBr. Do not go global with this reaction. It does not apply to HCl, HF, or HI. It only applies to HBr, and it has to do with the energetics of the reaction. Um, this is done in the presence of peroxides. It looks very much like a reaction you've already learned, the only difference being that there's peroxides and usually a little heat or a little light. Okay, that means light. All right, um, long ago, um, a number of research groups were finding that when they added HBr to alkenes, sometimes they obtained, um, or at least like one group was obtaining, Markovnikov addition, which we have learned about in some detail. I was going to say ad nauseum, but we have not learned about it ad nauseum. And um, other groups were finding they got the anti-Markovnikov product exclusively. When this occurs, that implies something's wrong <coughs> or something's right, as may be the case. But it implies that there's some contaminant or some condition that's different that's causing a different mechanism. So the fact that one group was getting anti-Markovnikov product, now what would that mean? That would mean the hydrogen would be at the, the more substituted carbon and the halogen would be at the less substituted carbon. Um, and um, the other group was getting Markovnikov. Okay, hydrogen at the less substituted, halogen at the more substituted carbon. So this is kind of the general reaction. It doesn't look very different from what you've done. So let's write out what's happening here. And really the best way to learn mechanisms is to write them from your notes several times and to also think about them while you're writing them and use your flashcards. And I'm going to talk about the flashcards in a minute. So supposing you ha had this, uh, this structure, okay? And you were adding HBr in the presence of a peroxide. Now, a typical peroxide would look more like this. I think you have notes on this reaction. What is a peroxide? It is a compound that has two O's bonded to each other, single bonded to each other. Okay, they're very reactive. This is the thing you're afraid of when you do reactions in the lab. You're afraid of making peroxides because peroxides, when they're dry, detonate. And that's something we always worry about. Okay, so if you did this reaction, it would be rather surprising because instead of getting the Markovnikov product, you would obtain this plus its mirror image. And again, watch it with that mirror image thing. I saw a lot of people drawing flat structures. Now I'm drawing its diastereomer. This one should get four. I told you it was possible you could get four. So I'm saying you could get this in its mirror image, that's a pair of enantiomers, and this in its mirror image, that's a pair of enantiomers. Okay, what is the mechanism for this reaction? Because it's clearly doing something different. Okay, all right, well, let's write something. And there's a nice mechanism written in your textbook. Okay, we can discuss what's going on here a little bit. This will bring you back to your days in lab when you did a free radical mechanism. And I hope you remember some of that, or you can go back and review that, because that's the only time we do that reaction. But it becomes important. So in this reaction, right, in any free radical, a good free radical reaction, there's what we call an initi initiation. Now remember, what happens in an initiation? In an initiation, you make the original free radical for the reaction. So what this involves is a peroxide, and in this case, it's a, a carboxylic acid type peroxide. Peroxides tend to have very weak OO bonds. They're on the order of like 50, kilo, uh, 50 kilocalories. That would be like 200 kilojoules. So this, if I add light to it or heat, this symbol means light, H nu, this will split into very easily into free radicals. So the big difference between the groups was that in some of the groups, there was a little bit of peroxide forming in their solvents or in their reagents, and the other group they weren't. 
So basically, if you purify and get rid of these, these, these peroxides, you won't have any problem with the reaction. Okay, so then once you get this peroxide, there's actually two initiation steps. And you've seen this before because you've done this with AIBN. This is a radical. What are radicals looking for? They're looking for a bond and an electron. So what happens is this pulls the H off the HBr forming the bromine radical. And that is the original radical for the reaction. So the initiation must form first reaction, first radical involved in the propagation steps. Okay? And you'll remember this pattern. You should go back and review it. Okay, so that's initiation. Okay, propagation. I'm not going to show a lot of um, not going to show a lot of propagation. Propagation. What is propagation? Propagation is where the products form and the original radical forms. So the reaction can keep going. Okay, so I'm going to take my substrate, which looks like this, and I'm going to add the bromine radical to it. Now this is kind of interesting because this is really, this is one of those reactions where it looks anti- Markovnikov. A lot of people argue with me about this, but it's really Markovnikov. Okay? The reason is, this is very definitely an electrophile. And what did we learn about Markovnikov addition? We learned that electrophiles add so that we get the more substituted carbocation. Well, in this case, the electrophile is going to add so that we get the more substituted radical. And radicals parallel carbocations in regard to their stability. So I'm going to add this bromine to the terminal end because it's the first thing added. Think about it. In a normal HBr addition, hydrogen is the first thing that adds. So what do I get? Think about that. You have to think about it. I get this radical and this bromine right there. Okay? Why is it better for the bromine to go there? I'm making a tertiary radical. This is also the rate determining step. And being the rate determining step, um, this bromine is, is intricately involved. Another explanation given is that you're forming the tertiary radical and also the fact that the bromine is large and it is sterically hindered at the tertiary site, okay? So it's doing two things. It's adding to form the more stable radical, the tertiary over the primary, and then it's adding because there's less crowding over here than there is in this area with all the branching, okay? It becomes a radical. Radicals don't rearrange, okay? You don't have to worry about that. Um, what's next? All right, well, the second propagation step involves taking the radical I just made. You're always in a good propagation, you're always making your products. Nine minutes. It's nine minutes already? Mm -hmm. So I'll finish this up quickly. You're making your product, but you're also making the original radix, radicals. So in the second propagation, you would pluck the H off an HBR and make your product. And then you would have to work out your stereochemistry. Okay? So in this case, you would get all permutations, but I'll talk more about that in class. I'm not writing terminal steps because terminal steps are kind of not important. Okay, thank you. How long?